Who are you? You are by, uh, based on titles? Or are you more than that? You are a human being, you know, which is beyond the title which people give you. And if you are giving yourself uh, any title, then you are limiting yourself with that. So, are you gay, lesbian, hetero, uh, what, uh, transsexual, and uh, whatever? These are all external things, you know. But more than that, you are a human being. So you consider yourself a human being, or you consider yourself through your gender as a person? This is the whole conception, you see. People see people from one perspective. They see people from a judgment perspective. You see, sometimes you see yourself through a certain lens, like I was explaining yesterday, which society have programmed you to see. And then, of course, then you self-judge yourself, and you self then everybody judge you. No. So who are you, truly? You know, in some people, you know, the masculine energy can be stronger. I have seen m women who act like men. You know, I've seen men who act like women. I have seen gay, lesbian, and so on. But this doesn't matter. How does God see you? Do you think he have created any mistake in his creation? If you are born as a gay or lesbian or hetero or transgender or whatever, do you think God, God made mistake in his creation? God doesn't make mistake in his creation. Only those who have a limited understanding perceive these narrow minders but as God, he doesn't see any. He sees the whole thing. You see, the knowledge which had been taught always about that, about the sexuality of people, how the, the one see things, knowledge we have to understand. Knowledge is limited. Lo knowledge is the lowest dimension, you know, as much as you can um, elasticate this limitation, uh, this uh, knowledge, it will still stay in the lowest dimension. The lower dimension can't become the higher dimension. You understand? So, there is a big difference between knowledge and wisdom. The people mind is based on knowledge. So whatever you do in life, you know, you do everything with a certain knowledge of things. You read, you do study, you but knowledge will never become wisdom. You know, knowledge will stay always knowledge. And this is the mind. It will always limit itself. The mind is based on external and whatever is external is possession. You know, so how can this? Knowledge is gradual, gradually increasing. No? You become knowledge, you become more knowledge, you become knowledgeable and so on, so on, so on. But still stay knowledge. It is a gradual increasing of understanding but wisdom is not the same. Wisdom awake instantly. So, and it is not based on anything which is uh, limited. Knowledge make you proud and arrogance. Wisdom make you humble. So, coming to your question, now again, and now I'm asking you this question. Do you think God have made any mistake in his creation by creating people how they are? 
I'm asking you. If he don't have any problem, then why you have a problem? <laughs> like I was saying, you know, in one of the satsang, some people come and tell you, oh, this is right and wrong, this is, this is. But one thing is that how can somebody else know you when you yourself, you don't know yourself? If you yourself don't know yourself, how can somebody else know you? That person will know you only if he, he or she knows themselves. And when you know yourself truly, then this limitation will never be there. Christ himself said, don't judge, you shall not be judged. No? This is the first commandment that he gave. But what the people do? This is the first thing they do. When they don't understand, they judge. Knows one thing, you are the Atma. No. And the Atma can play an extensive r role, you know, it can do many kind of roles. You have played so many roles. In one life you were a man, in another life you were a woman, in some life you were an animal. And this is what the Atma have gone through. Through the full creation. The Shastra talk, we have gone through 8.5 million life before you attain a human life. 8.5 million births you have taken. Not one. So all these qualities inside of you. But you are not this quality. You can't define yourself with uh, this even the, these, these limited uh, quantities, you know. But you are the divine potential. So who you identified yourself that you will become. So how much you accept yourself the way you are, you know, that much you will be free. If you can't accept yourself how you are, you will never be free. You will always have something to criticize about yourself. You will have always something to criticize about others. Then where is love into that? We say it now, when you love, you don't see any difference. Later on you see, when love is not present. But at the beginning, you know, when you're in the game of loving, let's put it like that, because you all went through that. So when you're in that game of loving, do you see the, 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 the fault in your partner? No, it can be the worst criminal. You will not see it. Why? Because at that moment you are in love. And when you are in love, you don't perceive limit. You perceive the whole, the fullness. So imagine how God is loving. Do you think he perceives the limitation? If he, he, if he will perceive the limitation, then he's not God. No, he's beyond that. That's why I say that uh, he's beyond his creation. Krishna said this beautifully in the Gita. Everything is in me, but I am not in everything. You know? It's amazing, you know? How would you understand that? Everything is in me, but I'm not in everything. Hmm? Find me. I'm the inseparable in the separable. I'm the sapidity of the water. I am the radiance of the moon and the sun. I am the uh, heat of the fire. So, 
how would you hold that? So it's nothing that you can hold with your hand. That's why it's explained how the soul, which is not manifested, you know, the soul, which is beyond this manifestation, but yet it is whole in the body. How is that? When that soul le leaves that body, the body falls down and died. The soul is not tangible. Can you hold it? You can't hold the soul. But yet, it is present inside something which is tangible, which is called the body. How? Hmm? How is that? I am. Everything is in me, but I am not in everything. It's a deep understanding. You know, but Atma is beyond this reality, beyond the concept of what you think you know and understand. Atma, you know, is not the Atma will play the game, you know, in different bodies, different games he will play until you come to the point of realizing. Awakening, God consciousness, no reali uh, a realization. So, in that big drama of life, you know, that what Krishna said, uh, everything is in me, I'm, but I'm not in everything. Somebody will say, but how can God is not in everything? You know, everything abide in me, but I don't abide in them. This we can see like a musician. Anna. The music resides within the musician, but the musician is doesn't reside in the music. The musician is free. So the same God resides within playing different roles, you know, what he have to play. And he, uh, that he, when you awake to that, you see, when you say saints, sages, they don't perceive the limitation of things. They perceive the fullness or the whole of everything. If you stay in the two point, you know, which is in the duality of things, then you will always balance in the duality. Good, bad, you know, like I was saying yesterday, heat, cold, and judgment, criticism, and so on. But this is not who you truly are. So these judgment of genders, you know, you know, with a gay, hetero, lesbian, and so on. These are just part of life, you know. Depend on how much you accept yourself, you know. But God doesn't have any problem. It is His creation. He don't make any mistake into that. <laughs> <laughs>